Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Brad Boyle of Triton Minerals. How are you today, Brad? I'm well, thank you. Brad, we're getting a lot of emails about Triton Minerals with, what? Does this company have the largest graphite deposit in the world or what? Can you speak to us? Yeah, look, it is exciting news. We, uh, we, last week we managed to uh, announce our maiden resource and yes, we confirm we do have the largest graphite and vanadium deposit in the world of nearly 1.5 billion tonnes. All right, so let me take you back. What was that announcement? For those of you that missed this announcement, this was a world-class news release for the graphite industry, and I noticed that Peter Epstein has started his graphite market review this week talking about your announcement. So could you please speak to the investor out there that may not even be aware of this particular news release, Brad? Thank you. Now, last Tuesday on the 21st of October, we put out our maiden resource from the Nakanda Hill uh, deposit. And as I said, that was uh, nearly 1.5 billion tonnes. And uh, that deposit is uh, made up of a 10.7% total graffiti carbon and 0.27 uh, vanadium pentoxide. So it's the largest in size for tonnes and one of the highest grades for graphite and vanadium in the world. Okay, graphite and vanadium. I'm still going to back you up again, Brad. You're one of the fastest moving CEOs on the planet. I think it was just before Christmas last year when some guy from Vancouver called me and said, you should watch this company with Closology because of your property and how close you were to the Syrah resources. I think your stock was less than a dime and right now you're what, third or fourth largest market cap in the world. Is that correct? You yeah, were up there and uh, we're hoping to improve on that uh, in the near future. It was only six months ago that it was a concept or a neurology play on Nakanda Hill. And uh, a short six months uh, later, we, we improve our maiden resource and make it the biggest in the world. All right. So right now, though, you're now moving towards your pre-feasibility study. Is that correct? Yeah, we've already started the work for pre-feasibility. Uh, we're about to finish a scoping study, and we hope to do that in the next few weeks. Uh, and then we're not going to stop. We're going to continue over the Christmas New Year period and we'll push into doing the pre-feasibility work and then straight into a proper feasibility uh, early next year, which hopefully should push into some bulk handling sort of uh, test work. And then if all going well, we'll be looking towards the production uh, in the near future, maybe in 2017. I want to go back to your results, and now I would like you to geek out for some of our more knowledgeable investors, which I know you're dying to talk to. Can you give us some real uh, in-depth feedback on what your most recent announcement really meant to those that actually understand graphite and vanadium? The resource itself, uh, as I said, it was uh, just under 1.5 billion tonnes, so, and it's got to contain graphite at that 10.7 total graffiti carbon. The contained graphite is nearly 156 million tonnes of pure graphite. And also with vanadium, uh, the vanadium pentoxide, there's nearly 4 million tonnes of vanadium pentoxide, which means that uh, it sits within this very large footprint of around about 6.2 kilometres long. So this deposit um, means that it's stretched over a long area. It's nearly a kilometre wide, and so we are spoiled for choice. We have a number of high-grade zones within that, and one of those areas is a, a hydrothermal area called the Matula Zone, and it averages nearly 12% over the whole length of around about five and a half kilometres. So it's one of the areas that we seek to concentrate on to get high-grade material, and uh, which obviously makes it more cost-effective going forward when we look at uh, the mining going in the next phase. I think as well, well, I was reading that your results and the type of graphite far exceeded what you had anticipated and finding in this very aggressive drilling pr uh, program that you've had over the last six months. Is that correct? Yeah, that's totally correct. We started out as an exploration, uh, I suppose, drill program in April this year. And due to the strong and consistent results that we managed to demonstrate over that footprint, um, it's quickly turned into a resource definition drill out and uh, we did around 16,000 metres of RC and diamond drilling so we covered a lot of ground and, and as you can imagine that footprint being nearly 5.2 uh, square kilometres is a huge amount of area and we're extremely fortunate that the mineralisation that we found was consistent uh, at, along the surface and at depth and it's a rare thing to have that 
um, in any sort of uh, deposit that you can see a consistency which you can project over a number of kilometres and be quite accurate about it. And I suppose for us to find a elephant, a larger elephant, right next to Sira, which was considered an elephant in its own right, um, is, is a really amazing thing. So to be number one in the world in a short six months, is uh, pretty. we're pretty happy with that result. Brad, that's an excellent point. Your closeology um, is very pertinent to investors going, you know, he's in Africa. How are they going to get the graphite and vanadium out? And, oh, let's get to the gold here as well. Go ahead. Can you explain what kind of infrastructure that you currently have for Triton? Yeah, look, this is one of the most um, uh, amazing things about this project. And the whole reason we originally looked at this project was the am amazing amount of infrastructure already in play. Um, we have a deep water port only 200 kilometres to the east of the Balama uh, region along a big bitumen highway. We only have to drive about nine kilometres on gravel to get to the top of the Kanda Hill deposit. So this is a rare thing to be able to drive on a major highway all the way to a deep water port, uh, which has, we have mains power that comes all the way out to Balama. We have telecommunications, which means we can use our mobile phones and the internet. Um, we have a local workforce, we have water, um, and all of these things, which would probably cost a, a company anywhere in excess of half a billion to a billion dollars to put into place, um, is already there and established and maintained. And that's a key feature, which is unusual uh, for that part of the region of, of uh, Africa, is to have a maintained infrastructure, which is quite rare. There's also an international airport at the Pemba, um, and there's a small airport at uh, Montepress, which is only 30 kilometres away from our deposit. So all of these things add together to make it uh, a very attractive uh, resource and deposit. Well, let's not leave out the vanadium. Everyone's talking about vanadium batteries. Can you tell us a little bit more about your vanadium? Now, the vanadium pentoxide is, um, look, this is what makes this uh, deposit so unique, is to have uh, two uh, crucial essential elements that go into your um, green energy. So your lithium ion batteries, the main component of the batteries is the graphite. And then you have your lithium, but you also use vanadium, and it's a key rare earth. Now, vanadium is also used in hardening of steel, and a few other bits and pieces. So it sells for around about $14,000 a tonne. So it's not a cheap commodity. And to have that as a byproduct of our primary purpose when we're going after graphite, you look, it is a great credit to have, and uh, we hope to utilize that fully going forward. All right, for all of you Investor Intel audience members that complain that CEOs spend too much money, we have one that's breaking all records. In fact, you look like you're so busy, uh, you never look like you shave there, Brad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sometimes I don't sleep either, So, uh, <laughs> but you get that. All right, so what should we expect the next six months? If you did this and you had this stellar performance in the last six months, what should we as shareholders anticipate going forward? Look, we, uh, we're we going to finish our scoping study in the next couple of weeks, uh, so we should have that out hopefully by the end of November, all going well, uh, if not early December, but the scoping studies will give us an, an idea of the economics. now. That is a crucial factor for us to be able to then lock down off-take agreements with potential. Now, we're in discussions with European, um, with Chinese, Japanese, and with the North American uh, parties, and hopefully one of those will be, uh, will be able to successfully negotiate some terms. But it all hinges on us getting, that's why we went for an indicated resource. So we've got an inferred and indicated. So indicated was a crucial step forward for us. Then we had the scoping study, which is, defines the economics. And then from there, we push into the feasibility. And once we've completed the feasibility process, which is environmental baseline studies, the social impact studies, and just the general understanding of the network and, and the design going forward, you then go into commissioning and then hopefully into production thereafter. So if, as I said, if all going well, we'll be looking at early 2017 to be actually producing graphite concentrate. Well, you heard it here first. Thank you so much, Brad, for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much.